when I was studying in Nairobi University, mm -hmm. I had friends of mine, particularly what we call the Chikuyus and the Wakamba, <laughs> yes. who would take me to their homes and we go for barbecues mm -hmm. and they taught me how to eat meat. Mm -hmm. Not because I did not know how to eat meat, but to eat meat. A 40-year dream tucked away 155 kilometers from Kampala. Kisomba Ranch sits on five square miles. That's 3,200 acres. Finally, here at uh, Kisomba Farm, uh, we are in the able hands of uh, Mili Mubiru, who is going to be taking us through the entire process. But we've heard a lot about Africa rising, two people talking about the change in Africa's fortunes. Africa has a lot of wealth, but wealth that has not been explored or exploited. There is a lot that is going on in Africa at the moment, but quite often it goes unnoticed. All you hear is wars, it's famine, it's droughts. But we want to tell a different story about Africa. And I think Kisomba Farm or Ranching Scheme will be one area we will be trying to find out about that. Any serious farming business ought to produce its own animal feeds, especially one occupying up to 1,300 hectares. My name is Odongo Felix, a pasture manager and a feedlot manager at Kisomba Ranching Scheme. One of the principles of farm management that you ensure that you establish pastures before you start anything. So in past establishment here we mean you ensure that you prepare your land, then you plant pastures, and then you ensure that you manage them, you don't experience a lot of seeds, uh, rather weeds, and then after that you harvest them, you can preserve them and feed it to your animals. So when you say preparation of land, I can see there's been already some activity here. Is this work done by the tractor or is it people's hands? Yeah. So here at our farm, what we do, we use tractors mm. to till our land. Mm -hmm. First of all, in pasture establishment, you first do primary cultivation. In a primary cultivation, you can do it using hands, you can do it using tractors. But for our case, we do it using a tractor. Mm -hmm. Then after primary cultivation, you allow weeds to grow, and there you apply a non-selective herbicide. For our case here, we use weed master. Mm -hmm. That weed master is going to kill all the weeds, such that by the time our pasture is established, they are not going to experience a lot of weeds, as so you can see. They are, they are not fighting with any weeds, and actually it's very clear, you can see how this area has been, you know, sort of prepared and yes. is cleared of, of, of any problem. Yeah. That's primary cultivation. primary cultivation. Then secondary cultivation. Then after, mm -hmm. we go to secondary cultivation. Now secondary cultivation is going to help us to break down those big soil crudes into small particles. What is the reason? We want to ensure that by the time we plant our pastures, the garden is very fine and seeds are going to emerge and germinate very well. Mm -hmm. yes. So to, a, to an ordinary farmer, when does this start happening? Because remember, we are probably talking about people who are going on rain-fed agriculture. Yes. Yes. So they are, they, are, they, are, they are there for waiting for the seasons when the rains will be coming. When should one start preparing their land for that? So you should start preparing your land one month back. So one such month before by, the rains. Yes, such as that coming. by the time rain set in, mm -hmm. your land is very ready to receive seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now the problem, of course, is seeds. Finding finding seeds. Yes. Uganda, quite a lot of times, and many African countries actually, we have a problem of fake seeds. Yes. How, where do you get the right seeds to be able to plant? For here, our case one, we are seed producers. How big is is your pasture section here? So we have got thirty acres of land where we're planting boma grass mm -hmm. yeah, then in other sections we have seven acres where we're planting our uh, sugar napier right. and then one acre where we have giant panicum yes. let's talk about challenges in your department mm -hmm. you're part of a big farm 
What sort of challenges would you say you face as a pasture manager in the management of pasture? Okay, wonderful. One, rains. Sometimes you find out that we have cut our grass, we want to make hay, but it just rained on that very day. So that becomes a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And then another thing... So that what, what would you have to do in that case then? Do you have so to are, dry it or...? If you find out that we have faced that challenge, we have no option, we have to pick it and feed our animals as in form of food. Alright, so straight away instead of getting to make the hay, yes. instead of haylage, then you end up just having to feed as just normal fodder. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And another thing what we do, if it is rainy season, mm -hmm. we feed that fodder or we make silage out of it yes. instead of making hay. The hay, yes. yes. Because yeah. hay is supposed to be dry grass. Definitely. So for our viewers who probably are not very familiar mm -hmm. or who are just starting farmers, yes. the hay is the actual dry grass. Mm -hmm. But if it's silage, then it can be wet, it can be, you know, as yeah. long as you've just wilted it, mm -hmm. you're able to feed it to your animals. So, so that's challenge number one, the rains. Yes. What else uh, do you so face? Another challenge? thing is that uh, we experience some drought. So you find out that if it is you're experiencing a lot of drought, the grass will not give a lot of tonnage as we expect. Because here under good management, mm. we are expecting 16 tons per hectare. Every 16, harvest. 16 tons per hectare. Yes. And a hectare is 2.5 acres for the ordinary person. That is 2.5 acres is your hectare. So per hectare, okay. 16 tons. 16 tons of boma grass. Of boma grass. Uh, finally, now, if you have any message maybe to any farmers out there watching you right now, yes. what message would you have for them? So our dear farmers, I tell you that one, ensure that you establish good pasture that you farm. And here for our case, Boma grass is doing for us a lot of wonders. Mm -hmm. So if you are out there and you are a farmer and you have not taken interest of planting boma grass, please, it's high time you take it up. Right. The ranch employs 27 permanent staff and more than 100 casual laborers. Their day starts with a boost to the day ahead. Each one is provided with free milk depending on their family size. Emphasis has been put on beef production going forward. Earlier efforts at milk production have not yielded much profit. There are 11 kraals, each holding about 120 cows. Each kraal has its grazing grounds with water provided in each paddock. This is a 40-year dream embarked upon by Matia Kasaija, Uganda's current Minister of Finance and Economic Planning and elected representative of the people of Buyanja County in Kibale District. Listening to him is very interesting to hear where it all began from, an appetite for something in short supply at home. When I was studying in Nairobi University, mm -hmm. I had friends of mine, particularly what we call the Chukuyus and the Wakamba, <laughs> yes. who would take me to their homes and we go for barbecues. Mm -hmm. and they taught me how to eat meat. Mm -hmm. Not because I did not know how to eat meat, but to eat meat. Serious, because serious meat because eating. Because with, with my father, <laughs> meat would see, would sit maybe once on Christmas yes. or Easter and Christmas. Mm -hmm. There it was a daily meal. Yes. So I developed the desire to eat meat mm. and meet it in, eat it in, in good quantity. So is that, is that, are we talking about a whole goat, maybe no, a no, no, side of a goat? No. Or, yeah. maybe, half, maybe half a, half a, half a, <laughs> half a leg. <laughs> half a leg. <laughs> so when I returned back to Uganda mm. and I started working and I even got married, mm. the desire to eat meat was very big. Mm -hmm. If my wife cooked food, Without some meat, uh, that's a, yes, that's the reject. Even if even if she just put uh, something small like this, mm -hmm. maybe some ten grams or something, mm -hmm. I would enjoy the, the meat for during a minute's time. Mm -hmm. The price of meat sprang from one shilling eighty cents to three shillings twenty cents. Of that time, mm -hmm. that was a lot of money. A dollar was about sixty shillings. Mm -hmm. 
at that time. So that's a half a dollar. Yes. And that was a pretty high. A lot of money. A lot for, of money for, for us. For an ordinary person. For an ordinary person. Yes. So a friend of mine invited me to go and we pick meat from his ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, the late Kasura Francis. Mm -hmm. May the Lord God rest his soul in turn of his. Yes. We used to be working in a share and we were members of Kampala Club. That's how we linked very closely. Mm -hmm. So he suggests that we go to his farm somewhere in a single and get meat for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. When we did it, we found the meat. We, at that time, we had no phone. We, had, we would write a letter. So he wrote mm -hmm. a letter three, four days, mm -hmm. taken by bus to, to inform his staff there that were coming. So we went and we found them ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he, he, after we had packed our meat. What sort of meat was it? How big? How well, big well, was well, a whole cow. A whole cow. A whole cow. For how many of you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for I think about 10 of us. Mm -hmm. About 10 of us. Because he had also got orders from friends from Kampala ah, right. yes. But me, mm -hmm. I remember, mm -hmm. I think I had 10, I had 20. Me, I had 20, uh, 20 kilos. Mm. Mm -hmm. For our own in the, in the house, but also for friends mm -hmm. mm. and our neighbors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after he had the, we had packed the meat, we are ready to go. Mm -hmm. The guy says, mm, you, I want this man here. I come from Bonyoro. Mm. So he said, my Munyoro man, I want to give him uh, in Tula in English is uh, eggplant. Egg, egg plant. Yes. <laughs> I said, Francis, he was mm. called Francis Kasur. Francis, what are you talking about? Give me eggplants when I have got meat. <laughs> and I've got meat. He said, don't yes. worry, don't worry. <laughs> yes. So he sent his boys behind uh, the car and uh, in no time I had a, a noise. Man, man. Uh, sound of a goat. So sound of a goat. Yes. So the dog was very well trained. He, he said, you go and get your, 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 your eggplants. <laughs> so when I went back at the back, I found the goat, <laughs> the dog sitting on the on the goat. Yes. Not moving, not biting it. Yes, just taking charge mm. of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, from there, I said, I must have something similar to this. Mm. A, to answer my source of good meat, mm -hmm. but also to do something like this. Yeah. So that's how the whole idea started. Mm -hmm. And I started looking for land. Uh, eventually, I found this land. I came and inspected. This was like a national park. Yes. We are talking with buffaloes here. Mm -hmm. We are talking with the elephants. Wow. It was, it's a public land, yes. but uh, there were no human beings. There were very few, mm. few uncalled cattle keepers, lost it. I mean, it located somewhere around you. Need, in order to reach somebody, you'd have to go th three, four, five kilometers. Yes. So we came, and uh, when I, I decided to, to take this piece of land, I went for my mentor. Mm. So I brought him here. Was here, Kasura? There, uh, Kasura. Yes. there was no road. Mm. We would, we would drive and leave the, the car about f four kilometers that mm. side. Mm. But uh, I came with him, and uh, when he arrived, if you saw where the deep is, yes, he said, if you don't take this land, you are a fool. Take it. Mm. Because land of this type and this size is now in northern Uganda, or that side of Nakasongola and Masini side. Mm. So we took, put it an application and we were given this land in 1978. Mm. A lot of times many people try to embark on farming. They look at it as a dream. You come to a herd like this, very well established, and then you want to rush in. 11 crows on this particular farm, about 110, 120 cows per crow. Two herdsmen on each, full-time work. This takes commitment, it's, it's a lot of money, but a, a, you need a lot of passion and then you need a lot of knowledge. I joined this farm in 2012, now I think it is 10 years. Mm. So we have been uh, struggling here and there, but we are still going on. We have tried to do some the managerial practices in time. For example, the dipping. 
we dip these animals weekly. Every Friday, Saturday, we are the deep, dipping the animals. So we do the warming. We do warm them in time so that our animals to look, to look healthy. Mm. We do warm them every after four months because we have a warming program. We vaccinate them to avoid the diseases. Mm. So we have also a vaccination program. How do you manage to move into all these departments to make sure people are doing what they are supposed to do? So for me, what I do, I have other managers yes. whom I, I send them there. I give them a call. You do this, you do this, you do this. For me, just to go and supervise. Our, our farm is big, as you know, it's five square miles. Uh, each location, we have water trough. For example, we have been in Chigarama. There is three water troughs. Cows that are feeding from there, they, are, they must feed, they must take water from that side. And this one which are coming from Nyamiriango, they also take water from that side. Mm -hmm. Unless we get shortage of water, that's it. That's why we bring them. Oh, you can bring them to be able to be. Yeah. Kisombo Ranch has more than a thousand goats, mainly the South African boar type. At some point, goat sales were the core of business here, fetching millions. A boar goat costs three quarters of a million Uganda shillings, giving birth twice in 13 months, and with the advantage of maturing fast, the rate of multiplication makes a lot of business sense. But that was before the advent of the Buran cow. Tender, sweet, fast to grow, and resilient to many harsh conditions. It's a true cash cow, costing between 7 and 10 million Uganda shillings. The challenge is uh, the market now. People, because for us here, we use a weighing scale. We weigh the animals before we sell them off. We don't sell the animals anyhow, no. We pick, we say maybe this one is not productive, it is for slaughter. We just take them to the deep, we weigh them, then we sell them. But mm -hmm. the people, they, are, they don't know where the animals are, yes. so that is the biggest challenge. So publicity has been an issue. People, you, are, you, are, you had not come out to say, look, we have the animals, please come and buy. We, so, have, we have tried, we have tried, because we have attended the trade show, we have announced on, over the radios, but people, they are still coming slowly. Being around daddy, the farm is embarking on new marketing strategies, including, but not limited to, auction sites like my upcoming Fantastic Africa channel. Mini is supposed to be doing change now that you're here doing all the donkeys work. Honare Bokasaija is a very busy man, but he made time to coincide with my visit to the farm. Traversing more than 3,000 acres is no mean feat. Punctuated by the occasional stops to inspect one thing or another, you sometimes lose sense of how much area you've covered. As is natural to many farmers, food was on the day's menu. Now you guys, you know my love for food and I'm at the minister's farm. I'm having lunch with the minister of finance, Honorable Matia Kaseja. Uh, we are actually sharing food here. We've, that's the beauty of, of, of farming. The stuff just comes from here, everything from here, and we're going to give it justice. Watch me. <laughs> For the last 15 years, he has not touched meat at all. Uh, to imagine a farmer who's working so hard on meat, on the beef, and you cannot eat it. Well, I'll, I'll eat on his behalf while I still can. I had to prepare for the afternoon, seeing the rest of this expansive ranch. Importantly, hearing how the current transformation was attained. In April 78, with my brother, we put camp and we started. Uh, the job, of course, was interrupted by war. So when we went to war, things became a bit standstill mm. until we fought and took over government. And uh, then I resumed, but again, there was no money, I couldn't borrow from the bank. The, the security, the surrender, we had not even got, I think at that time, a, a, a title. Mm. We got the title slightly later. Uh, but uh, from that time, I have not looked for it. Diversification is crucial for a farming development, even if the ultimate objective is to specialize. 
Kisumba Ranch has dedicated 57 hectares to agroforestry with eucalyptus and pine trees. A mature eucalyptus tree can earn up to 30 US dollars, while a mature pine tree can easily get you about 77 US dollars. A bulk sale of an acreage can boost further investment on the farm. Looking at the farm's prized possession, I'm reminded the farmer who ventured into cattle rearing back in 1978 to eat as much meat as those Kikuyu and Kamba friends of his university days can only look at it now. I think I ate too, too much, much meat, <laughs> too much beef, yes. and I got to meat muchomo. Yes. I developed a disease called gout. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Very painful. Yes. Uh, very painful. You get the store there, and they, but also they can damage it. The gout damages your veins. Mm. Actually, now I suffer consequences. Yes. Because uh, uh, one time I developed a clot, mm. and the real reason is because gout went and damaged the veins. The veins, so the blood yes. cannot quickly run through. Yes, yes. But uh, now mm. I'm pursuing it to make it a business. Mm. Uh, commercial business mm. to generate money, mm. uh, provide jobs to the youth, mm. but provide money for money which I can use to do anything else I want to do. Mm. That's the mission now I am. This is a lot of land and uh, when you come here and mm. see that dream that started in 1978 when uh, you acquired this land uh, and where you are at now, uh, how does that feel for you? I feel very great. You know, the value out of this land, I mean this farm, mm -hmm. to me, to me, to me now. Yes. You see, when I come here and I see these animals alone, mm. the satisfaction I get is unbelievable. I, I know that feeling. The that feeling. mental resting mm -hmm. when I see them. Mm. You know, we cattle keepers, mm. we may not enjoy only the meat, mm. but we enjoy by just seeing these animals. There's that psychological satisfaction, satisfaction, that, satisfaction that comes from uh -huh, that. Yes. from that. When mm. I look at us, we are looking at them like that. I stand here and I watch them. Yes. They go to cut to drink water. I come and I see, watch them and they give them water. I touch some of them. I mean, you get a psychological satisfaction. Do they feel you? Do they know you? Do they, do you does your appearance uh, actually sort of ring a bell? No, I must. But but before I, before there were many, mm -hmm. many knew me. Mm. I could say, they, 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 they will come. come but now there are many and I don't have time. I come twice a month, mm -hmm. I spend one night, but then I have to spend a day looking at various things, the yes. gardens, yes. Uh, the pastures. Mm -hmm. uh, I have also, we are keeping also, also goats here. But the, another value on this farm on my life yes. is I walk. Next May, I will be 79. Mm -hmm. But if I, we said, let's run and climb that hill. <laughs> I, I would be the one sweating. <laughs> we, we can try that. <laughs> you you would arrive there. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Honorable Minister, now, mm. uh, as a Minister of Finance, mm. I mean, you are, as a government minister, leave alone your portfolio, which is even a very, very a big portfolio. Mm. That's a very, very busy ministry. And I was, to me, I was actually going, I was just about to ask that because mm. when you go elsewhere i've been to england for example mm. where i live a lot of the times mm. you find that farming is a full-time job people are into work full-time they're waking up there they are spending their entire lives yes. you are coming here twice a month yeah. how are you managing to sort of see that this is this is a legacy all that you pass on all, all beyond that i'm lucky yes uh, i have a daughter just behind here she's the managing director of the business mm. the other one is a manager mm. For us, we are just directors and we come and watch and, and then we go and advise. Uh, she comes also, like one time allows, she can be here weekly mm. for one or two days. She is married and has got children. She can't stay also too long because that's that responsibility. Yes. And then uh, the other children, they come as when they wish. Uh, even Madame comes once and when she wishes, but. Uh, I will not say that everything moves the way I want, mm -hmm. if I were here. Now, Kisomba Ranching Scheme, I think, is at a level where they can now, we can now get into larger production because we have all the fundamental things on the ground. Mm -hmm. We have the water, we have the power, 
We have, uh, with the support of the managers, they've been able to beef up on the numbers of the cattle and the goats. The labor is there, but of course we can improve on that. But the basic fundamental um, necessities to get this business to another level are in place. We have an abattoir here. We are eliminating the middleman. And believe me you, our generation of income will be higher because we are slaughtering at the source. And believe me you, if you walked onto the market in Uganda and you're able to, you, 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 you look for these cuts that we get from beef, they are costly. So if Kisongwa can be able to do that on its own and simply transport to the market, then that is a big opportunity for us to reap big. Talking about you personally, you are the daughter of the minister, the owner of the farm. Uh, you are now directly involved in the activities of this. Where did you get the passion? Where did this start from? Because hmm, a lot of businesses... That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I used to come. Yes. I used to come. Uh, I would come in. But I had not... I used to come in though I was working in office. But I used to come in. But where I got the passion from is... Now this is very personal. Mm -hmm. I needed a car eh, to move, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, to make my movement much more easily. So there are animals that I also have as an individual here that yeah. were given to me by my father. So I approached my father and I told him, now, Mze, I want to buy a car. He told me, you want to buy a car? Yes. Where is the money? I said, but I have the animals there. Why don't we convert the animals into money and I buy the car? So he seconded that idea. Yeah. So for me, if you can be able to buy something like a car eh, from these animals, I think, what else would you require? So that means that that animal, at any one time, you can liquidate it and get whatever you want. So the ability to convert cash, you know, from, from cow to cash is, 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 is very, very quick. For me, it easy. made a lot of meaning for me. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten, with time, I've gotten interested in the business just from that perspective. Me, I'm a private sector man. Mm -hmm. I've, never worked, I've never worked in the government at all. Mm -hmm. Yes, my first job was in Shell. When I mean, wanted to kill me, I resigned from Shell uh, to save my skin. And then I started a private business. Mm -hmm. We had a factory in the industrial area. We had a shop on, on Antebe Road. My wife had a shop on Room Street. But when I mean was going, everything was destroyed. Mm -hmm. You have a knack for politics, because I was the Secretary General of the Uganda uh, Students yes. Association in Nairobi. Ah, right, yes. Uh, which also earned me, I'm writing a book which earned me a book from the late Jomo Kenyatta. <laughs> 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 in Zimbabwe. Our fellow Africans there were mistreated. And we, the news, there was no things like you was people to you have, the, but it came in the newspapers. So we decided to go and demonstrate mm. on the streets of Nairobi. Mm. So when we demonstrated, you know, you know children, you know youth, how they can be, they became rowdy. Mm. And they started beating and hitting cars of the Europeans. Mm. So, Eventually, we were arrested as leaders. Mm. But Jomo Kenyatta, you know those old men, they said, you know, these youth, I must teach them. So he summoned us to State House. How many were you? Three. The three of you? Mm. Kubo, mm. the chairman, mm. Kasaija, Secretary General, and uh, somebody from Tanzania, unfortunately, I forget his name. Mm. So we went to State House. Then he asked us, he said, You, 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 to our African brothers in, the, in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe, what is called mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Northern Rhodesia, yes. was no good. Mm -hmm. He says, no, you are bad leaders. We said, I apologize, sir. He says, Lala Chin. <laughs> <laughs> the, the president of Kenya is asking you to Lala Chin. Five kibok each. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that. <laughs> Five strokes. Yes. He says, now nah, you go back. Mm -hmm. Go back to go back to your reading. You said, sir, thank you very much. 
but he, we did not intend to do that. <laughs> Actually, we had to seek another appointment <coughs> yes. to go and uh, tell him. And you know, they respected us really, these leaders. Mm. Obote here was respecting students yes. very much students from Makerere. Yes. Even in Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. Nyerere was doing that. They were really respecting us mm -hmm. because they saw us. They were the, students as well and they knew, and they knew. They knew what comes yeah. from So we went politics. back and said, Mzee, me. we did not really intend that. Things just went off, off hand mm. and the students became rowdy. We did not have means of, of how to, to control them until the police came. Mm. Eventually. He, 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 he excuse, I mean, he abandoned us, yes. and we died. He died when we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, about this farm, Honorable mm. Minister. Now, President Museveni has come to this farm. Yes, he has come here. How did that feel? How did you get him? Did you just say, as a minister, you, Your Excellency, I would like you to visit my no, farm? No, 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 no. Where did what, that come no, from? No, no, no. Let me tell you how it came from. Mm -hmm. We have an association called Uganda Beef Producers Association. Yes. He was also a member. Mm. He actually, he is still a member. Yes. Uh, so he came to grace the occasion. That's how he came here. Uh, I had crossed uh, uh, an uncle animal mm -hmm. with a brown bull mm -hmm. and produced a beautiful heifer. Yes. But when he looked at it, it was a very beautiful heifer. He said, mm, Kasaja, you have polluted. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have mixed up things. <laughs> because for him, mm, he's a pure for, believer. He's a in, believer in, of Nankore Road. Yes. yes. Me, I will for God, for him, he will for in cows. Yes. But for me, for cows. Ah, uh -huh. <coughs> for beef cows. You <laughs> can't take me out for a man of run. Because they also grow fast and they grow f big. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very good. The only thing which I've been hearing. They have whitish, uh, whitish, uh, whitish fat. Mm -hmm. The Ankole has got yellow fat. Yellow fat, yes, yes. Now I'm told yellow fats mm. are more amenable to the body than white fats. So yes. I, I will be educated by the, the technical people. Mm. Uh, but uh, they produce very good tender meat, very nice meat. Mm. Now looking at government and in terms of investment, mm. the amount of investment that has gone into the production either of beef or even in the dairy sector in, mm. you know in general mm. do you think it is enough and what is what is missing why why has it been difficult probably to organize even these you know farmers the, the, the livestock farmers to be able to benefit from you know government support government throws money in there but it's the impact the the the, the, the reaction is, is, is not is, is not, not being felt what, what what is missing what what has what is not being done right i think what is missing mm -hmm. You know, every job, if you want to, to somebody succeed, mm. you must have an interest. If I didn't have an interest in this place, I would have run away. Yes. The challenges I had here yes. Yes. were innumerable. Mm. Lack of water, mm. no roads, we slept in a tent for almost a year, the, 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 the insects are biting you. Mm. Uh, so I think where the mistake lies in say and if, with the parish model mm -hmm. we are go going to get that little problem is it, is you it, do it, not it. give somebody something that he does not want mm -hmm. he should have the desire and to make a choice i will tell you for example uh, through nads we supplied heifers mm -hmm. thinking that everybody Will yes, keep the, the cattle. Yes. No, in my own village, I will tell you even a very shocking story. Story. The woman was given a cow. He has never tested. He has never looked after a cow. He does not know how it, it eats. Yes. So, what happens? The cow gets sick. The woman rings me and says, "Kashaija, tell him seven yes. to send me drugs, to send him money, <laughs> to treat his cow. Now it is seven is cow." No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? Yes. Yes. But in the parish model, mm. we are insisting that people must go for something that we they have a, have a passion for. Yes. Short of that one, mm. you never succeed. Mm. You never succeed. Mm. In anything, by the way, if you do not, if you are not passionate, mm. if you are not convinced, mm. because there is nothing you will do in this world without a challenge. Every, you, whatever you're doing, including your journalism, I'm sure you have found the challenges. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Now, if you are not convinced that what you are doing 
is, is real to the best of your heart, mm -hmm. you'll, give, you'll, give, you'll give up in the midst of... of so of if you had any advice mm -hmm. for anyone uh, who would want to be a farmer, actually you are doing the, 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 the farming itself, mm -hmm. You want a market for that. If you had an advice for anyone who would want to join to this fight, kind of business, given your experience mm, now, what mm. sort of advice would you have for such a person? First of all, you have the passion. Yes. You want to become a farmer. Just like you feel you are a journalist. You, there are those who are engineers. Those are those who are veterinary scientists. There are uh, musicians. Mm. Mention them. They must have a passion. Mm to say this is what I like. Now once then you have got your choice, then now you start looking for ways to actualize those the passion. The passion. Yes. There has been a whole talk about Africa rising. Big business turning to Africa to try to find ways of making money in Africa. And one of the biggest sectors that have benefited from this is the farming sector. But many people have rushed into the farming, throwing a lot of money into the sector without adequate knowledge. There might be passion on one hand, but passion without knowledge is money bound to be burnt. So people need to first of all plan very carefully if you're going into farming. It's not a business that is going to pay you in one year, two years, maybe three years. From three years you can start thinking about profitability. So very important that before you throw your money, some people even get to retire and then once they retire, they decide to invest their retirement package into farming. You will get burnt. It starts with passion, but beyond passion, you need to have the adequate knowledge do the business profitability aspects and then get going. Know that you're thinking about probably minimum of three years and then probably a maximum of 10 years that you might have to wait before your business gets profitable. So beyond that, yes, Africa is rising, but it has to rise with ample knowledge that would push it to that next level.